everyone welcome to vaisha as youtube channel this is episode number 3 of art and culture in the previous video we have discussed about the sculpture of harappan civilization we had a brief uh, discussion on seals bronze figures terracotta sculptures pottery and ornaments we have also discussed about mauryan art and its classification so mauryan art can be classified into two types uh, court art which is done by court initiative and popular art by the individual effort we have also discussed about national emblem and sculpture and pottery during the mauryan uh, period and we have also discussed about the difference between the ashogan pillar and the akamenian pillars in today's video we will be discussing regarding the post mauryan art so after the decline of the mauryan empire in the second century bc we, uh, there was a uh, emergence of small dynasty in various part of uh, india among them shungas kanvas kushana shakas in the north and shatavaganas ishvakas and abiras in the southern and western india gained the prominence similarly in the religion uh, in the of uh, brahmanical sect we had the emergence of uh, shaivites vaishnavites and uh, shaktites so rocket caves and stupas continued during the period of uh, post mauryan and art of sculpture uh, 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 reached its climax during the period of uh, post mauryan coming to the point of architecture during post mauryan period uh, the rocket caves continued during post mauryan uh, period and during post mauryan period we have two types of rock caves uh, developed they are chaitya and vikar see this vikar is a residential hall for the buddhist and the jain monks so the vikar has developed during the time of mauryan itself and chaitya has developed during the time of post mauryan so chaiti and vikar are mainly quadrangular chambers with flat roofs they are used as prayer halls so caves also had the open courtyard and stone screen walls to shield from the rain and these walls are decorated with a human and animal figures example karle chaiti and uh, ajanta caves now let's see about udayagiri and kandagiri caves of odisha these caves were made under the kalinga king in the first century bc and uh, these both caves are uh, located in the present day bhuvaneswar there are artificial and natural caves over uh, the udayagiri and the kandagiri caves totally 18 caves in udayagiri and 15 caves in uh, kandagiri are present in udayagiri there was a famous uh, inscription called the hatti gumba in, in which which is carved in the brahmani script so it starts out with the jain namoharna mantra this hatti gumba inscription highlights the various military campaign undertaken by the king karavela so rani gumba gave in uh, udayagiri is a double storied and has some beautiful sculptures so you can have a look on the kandagiri and the udayagiri caves now let's see about the stupas during the post mauryan period during post mauryan period the uh, the stupas were large and more uh, decorative compared to the mauryan period and stones were used in place of wood and bricks so the idea of toran as beautifully uh, decorated gateway to the stupa was introduced by the shunga dynasty and uh, toran were carved with figure uh, figures and patterns uh, this was evidence of hellenistic uh, influence hellenistic influence is the uh, influence of greek culture in the indian art uh, example bharat stupa in uh, uh, madhya pradesh and the toran at uh, sanji stupa in madhya pradesh so you can have a look on these stupa in the previous video itself we have discussed about the stupa so these two pillars are considered as toran uh, which is decorated with the human or animal figures and uh, this is a uh, methi uh, this methi is a pedestrian path and this methi will be connected with the two stairs now let's see about the sculpture during the uh, post mauryan period in post mauryan period there were three dominant schools of uh, sculpture they were gandhara madura and amravati uh, gandhara school has developed in the western frontier of punjab and uh, punjab near the modern day peshawar and afghanistan this gandhara school of art is influenced by the greek and roman sculpture uh, that's the reason it is also known as greco indian school of art Uh, this gandhara school of art is uh, flourished in two stages between the period 50 bc to 500 bc in the first stage they used bluish gray sandstone and the later stage they used mud and stucco for making of uh, sculpture in madura school uh, it flourished in the bank of river emuna and the sculptures of madura were influenced by three religion they are buddhism jainism and uh, hinduism the madura school used the symbolism in uh, images that is uh, the hindu uh, god is uh, represented by their avayudhas 
example shiva is shown to linga and muhalinga halo in the head of the buddha is larger compared to the gandhara school and buddha is shown to be surrounded by two bodhi satavas they are uh, padmapani holding the lotus and vajrapani holding the thunderbolt now let's see about the amaravati school uh, this amaravati school is developed in the bank of river uh, uh krishna under the patronage of the shatavagna rulers uh, amaravati school emphasized more on the use of dynamic images or narrative sculptures so sculptures we used uh, the tribanga posture that is the body with three bends see this um, uh, gandhara and madura school were uh, patronized by the kushana rulers now let's see the difference between gandhara madura and amaravati school so gandhara school has heavy influence of greek or uh, hellenistic uh, sculptures so it is also known as indo greek art uh, so they used bluish gray sandstone uh, in the starting stage that is in the first stage and later they used the uh, mud and stucco for making the sculpture in gandhara school of art in gandhara school uh, they used mainly uh, buddhist imagery which is influenced by the greco roman pantheon and this gandhara school of art is in, uh, patronized by the kushana rulers uh, it developed in the northwestern frontier in modern day kandahar coming to the point of amaravati school uh, it is developed uh, indigenously and there is no external uh, influence of external culture and sculptures were made using this potter red stone and influence of three religion hinduism jainism and buddhism were in amara uh, madura school and patronized by the kushana rulers and developed in and around madura song and uh, kankattila see this kankattila is a famous jain sculpture is famous for the jain sculpture in amaravati school uh, it developed in the uh, indigenous land there is no external uh, influence uh, of culture and sculptures were made using the white marble and mainly uh, the amaravati school we had the influence of uh, buddhist so it is patronized by the shatavagna rulers and developed in krishna godavari lower valley in and in and around the amaravati and naharjuna konda now let's see the features of uh, buddha sculpture in uh, amaravati gandhara and madura in gandhara the buddha is shown in a spiritual state with the wavy hairs and uh, buddha or few uh, fewer ornaments and seated in the yogi position and i are half closed as seen meditation in gandhara school of art and a protuberance is shown on the head signifying the omni signs of buddha so these are the features of uh, buddha in gandhara school of art in madura school of art the buddha is shown in delighted mood with smiling face and the body symbolizes muscularity wearing tight dresses and the face and head is head wear shaven so body is uh, buddha is seated in padmasana with different mudras and protuberance is shown on the head so this is the feature of the buddha in um, uh, madura school of art in amaravati the sculptures are generally the part of uh, narrative art uh, so there is a less emphasis on the individual feature of buddha so the sculptures depict the life stories of buddha and the jataka tales so you can have a look on the uh, gandhara and uh, madura school of uh, uh, art of buddha now uh, we have uh, completed the post mauryan and uh, let's move to the gupta age so the gupta empire in the 4th century uh, is con uh, is considered as the golden age of uh, india it's considered as the golden age of india and uh, early gupta rulers were uh, buddhist uh, and continued the buddhist architecture and temple architecture continued by the later uh, gupta rulers uh, the temple architecture reached its climax during the gupta period uh, buddhist and jain art reached its peak during the gupta age so gupta rulers in later phase were uh, brahmanical but they show tolerance for all the religion so there are uh, three principal deities uh, were uh, worshiped during the period of gupta age they were vishnu in the northern and central part of india uh, shiva in the southern part and shakti in the eastern part of india as well as the malabar coast or uh, southwest part of india now let's see the architecture during the gupta age so architectural development of the caves remained constant during the period of gupta 
and uh, it added features to the caves where uh, mural paintings on the wall so this mural painting is a piece of artwork painted on the wall or a ceiling or a per uh, permanent uh, surface example of mural paintings were found in the caves of ajanta and elora so now let's see about the ajanta caves see ajanta caves is a series of rocket caves in shahadari ranges of uh, ranges on vagro rivers near the aurangabad in maharashtra so there are 29 caves uh, in ajanta cave there are uh, 25 were uh, used as vikaras or the residential caves and four were chaityas which are prayer, uh, prayer halls so those ajanta caves uh, developed during uh, between 200 bc to 650 uh, ad so ajanta caves were inscribed by the buddhist monks under the patronage of uh, uh, vataka king harisena so the figures of ajanta caves were using fresco painting technique see this fresco painting technique is a technique of mural painting so it is similar to mural painting in which uh, uh, they executed upon the freshly laid or wet lime plaster and it is closely associated with italian renaissance painting so the outline of the painting were done in red color and uh, the uh, after that the uh, inside will be painted so important features in is the absence of blue color in the uh, paintings and cave number 16 is one of the important elegant specimens of the cave architecture in ajanta cave so paintings were uh, themed um, uh, around buddhism and the life of uh, buddha and jataka stories so no, 29th cave uh, 29 caves among them five were developed during the hinayana phase of buddhism and uh, 24 were uh, developed during the mahayana phase of buddhism so reference of ajanta caves can be found in the travel account of chinese uh, uh, buddhist traveler fan hen and hyun sang so some of the prominent sculptures of ajanta caves are mahapari parnivarana of buddha in the cave number uh, 26 so you can have a look on that image and naha king and his concert in the uh, cave number 19 now let's see about the elora caves see these caves are uh, important uh, uh, for the architecture cave architecture so we have important sites of cave architecture over elora caves and there are group of 24 caves 17 were brahmanical 12 buddhist and 5 jain caves so developed between the 5th to and 11th century ad which is a newer um, compared to the ajanta cave by the various guilds from the vidarbha karnataka and tamil nadu so uh, because of this various guild from the vidarbha karnataka and tamil nadu this cave reflects naturally diversity in terms of uh, uh, in terms of theme so cave number 1 to 12 is uh, buddhist cave number 13 to 29 hindu and cave number 30 to uh, 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 34 is jain of dihambara sect so so hindus and buddhist caves are uh, constructed by rashtragupta dynasty so jain caves uh, by the yadava dynasty prominent caves in elora are uh, cave number 10 which is uh, buddha chaitya can also be known as uh, vishvakarma cave or carpenter's cave and buddha is seated in uh, dharma chakra mudra with uh, bodhi tree carved at uh, his back in the cave number 10 in cave number 14 uh, uh, it is the uh, theme of ravanand ki hai and cave number 15 is uh, dasavada temple in cave number 16 uh, you can see the kailasha temple de uh, dedicated to lord shiva so it is developed uh, during the patronage of rashtrakuta king krishna 1 and carved out with monolith and even has a courtyard so it has a uh, 16 uh, uh, in the cave number 16 there is a sculpture on the wall of kailasha temple depicting ravana shaking the uh, mountain kailash uh, so you can uh, have a look on that and cave number uh, 29 dumar lana and cave number 20 uh, 21 rameshwar lana cave so famous jain caves are uh, cave on cave number 32 indra shaba and cave number 33 jagannath shaba now let's see about uh, ba cave see this cave is located on the bank of uh, river bagni in madhya pradesh and it is a group of uh, nine buddhist uh, nine buddhist caves developed around 5th uh, to 6th century ad so architecturally very similar to the ajanta cave and they are more significant cave in uh, caves or uh, rang mahal the paintings were more materialistic rather than the spiritualistic in the bag caves 
Now let's see about the Junag Caves. So the Buddhist caves are uh, located in the Junag district of uh, Gujarat. Uh, in these caves, they were having three different sites. They were Kapra Kodiya, Baba Payar and Upparkata. See, the Upparkata is a citadel. Um, so a unique feature of the Junak uh, Juna Cave is the present of the 30 to 50 high, uh, feet high citadel known as Upper Court in the front of the prayer hall. So you can have a look on that Upper Court. So now let's see about Mandapeshwar Caves. Uh, so it is located in the it is located in the Boyer Valley near Mumbai, also known as Montferrer Caves, uh, developed in the late Gupta period as a Brahmanical Cave, and later this cave was converted to Christian Cave. So the remains of the uh, caves include the uh, uh, sculptures of Nadaraja, Shadasai Eshivan, and uh, Ardhanadishwara. Now let's see about Udegiri Caves. Uh, see this Udegiri Cave, is na, don't confuse this Udegiri Cave with the cave which is discussed in the uh, previous slide that is Udegiri and Kandagiri slave, uh, clave, uh, Caves in uh, Odisha. So this Udegiri Cave in the Gupta age uh, is uh, located in Vidisha in Madhya Pradesh. So, so don't confuse with the Udegiri Cave which is in um, Odisha. So it is created in early 5th century AD under the patronage of uh, Chandragupta II. Uh, so this cave is famous for um, having numerous sculpture on the hills. So sculptures of Varaka or uh, Bor incarnation of the Vishnu is notable in Udegiri uh, caves of uh, Madhya Pradesh. So this ca uh, cave is dedicated to Shiva, Narasimha and uh, Narayana. Now let's see about the stupas during the Gupta age. See, during Gupta age, there was a decline in the development of these stupas. Um, but uh, uh, Damak stupa in Sharnath, uh, near Varnasi, is the finest example of stupa during the time of uh, Gupta age, and it is marked as a spot where Buddha uh, got his uh, gave his first sermon. Now let's see about the sculpture uh, during the Gupta age. So new school of sculptures were developed around Sharnath and characterized by the use of cream colored uh, sandstone and the use of metal. So sculptures of the schools were immaculately dressed and uh, lacked any form of uh, nakedness. The halo around the head of the Buddha was decorated uh, during the uh, in the sculptures of the Gupta age. So example you can see the uh, Sultan Gaj Buddha in uh, Bigar. It is a copper uh, sculpture. So for, uh, with this, we have come to the end of the session. I hope you have uh, liked this video. As I said earlier, uh, this video is a part of paid course of Vaish IAS. But if response is good here, we will consider po uh, putting it here fully. So what you have to do is you have to like, share, subscribe to Vaish IAS uh, channel and leave your feedback on comment. Uh, you can also, uh, um, for other UPSC test series and for uh, other queries, you can also contact Vaisar at uh, WhatsApp 7200686816875. Uh, uh, uh,